Hello everyone, welcome back to Eat Sleep Brief. Today we're going to be showing you guys how to set up this Fluval 13.5. Uh, it's absolutely great tank. I think it's a really good tank for you guys wanting to start out. Um, and for you guys out there that maybe don't have this tank, this video should get you started uh, with any tank you want to choose, even a, a tank from Petco if you really want to start one like that. Um, but yeah, come along guys, join me. I really think you guys are going to love it. So let's get right to it. The next thing is you're gonna kinda wanna put the tank where you're gonna have it. In my case, it's gonna be here, um, so it's easier for me to work on. So you guys are gonna have to figure out how you want your rock uh, scape to be. In the aquarium reef, uh, or I guess the whole aquarium industry, a scape is kind of um, your whole layout of, of your rock in this case. There's no plants here. Um, so your scape is your rock work. They call it aquascaping. So you're gonna have to figure out what you're happy with, what you're comfortable. Obviously, you don't have to do something as intricate as this. I'm not saying this is super crazy, but um, you don't have to do anything like this. I would recommend if you are gonna do something like this, you are gonna have to buy some glue, um, some glue to hold the rock together. I have a link in the description below. You can kind of see the glue right there and a little bit right there. I do my best to hide it so you don't see it. Um, and don't be worried about the glue color because as this tank matures, all of it will, will turn purple and that's called coralline algae so you won't have to worry about that so once you're happy with your rock work um, typically the the typical rule of thumb you want to put one pound of rock for every um, pound of water or for every gallon of water you have so if this was a 15 a gallon tank you want to have 15 pounds of rock um, that's a general rule of thumb i honestly didn't even see how much this weighs i think we're about eight nine pounds with this rock work um, and that's perfectly fine. I, you know, don't don't try and be dead on with it. Um, as long as you're happy with uh, with the rock skate, you know. Also, if you go over, it's honestly not a problem if you go over in the rock, um, the, the weight of the rock. That's if you if you had, you know, 12 pounds of rock in here. That actually be quite a bit. But even if you did, it only helps your your filtration be a little bit better. So the next step, once I'm happy with the rock work, we're gonna need the sand. Now for the sand guys, there's a lot of uh, different sand you can get out there. I really recommend the Carib Sea Reef Grade. The reason I, I, you, you have to make sure it says Reef Grade because other stuff has is really, really small particles. And what tends to happen if you have, let's say later you have you add like a, a wave maker um, to kind of make waves in your tank, the sand will get blown away. So make sure you get a Reef Grade. And for the sand in the rock, you can do uh, live sand, or uh, live rock or dry rock or dry sand. Pretty much to sum it up, one of them has bacteria on it um, and the other one doesn't. And when I say bacteria, I mean beneficial bacteria. Just think of it like when we eat yogurt, yogurt is, is, or is made of uh, uh, bacteria, but it's good bacteria. It's, it's kind of similar, but not exactly the same. I, I obviously want to keep this as simple as I can. Um, so once you are done with your, your rock work, you lay your sand. The rule of thumb for, for sand is also one pound of sand for every gallon of water. So in this case, it would need um, 13 pounds of sand. My rule of thumb is I blow all of, all of that out of the water. I'd say do about a quarter inch to half inch of a sand bed, and that's all you need. You won't have any issues with it whatsoever. You can go deeper, um, but I wouldn't go probably over an inch and a half, uh, which would probably be like that. I like to keep my sand very low. In my, in my opinion, it looks a lot better, it looks cleaner. Um, but try not go over an inch and a half um, if you can. Once you're done with that, what we are gonna need to do is set up the whole return. Let me get it out. So set up the whole return nozzle with the uh, return pump. And the return pump is actually still boxed up, so we'll unbox that. And then once that is finalized, all we're gonna have to do is add a heater. Now you guys will notice the media basket that came with it. So this here is carbon. This pretty, mu pretty much removes all contaminants of your water. I wouldn't say all of them, but most of them. It also keeps your water uh, crystal clear. And then this guy here is biological media. Now what this does, it, it also acts like rock work and it allows bacteria to grow in it, around it, and just propagate and really help your tank. So this one goes on the bottom, this one goes on top, and this bad boy goes right into the middle chamber. And then, let's set up. And then, on the first chamber here, you can run a skimmer. I honestly am not going to be running a skimmer. You can run one if you want. I'm going to end up running a refugium, which is going to be um, installed here in this chamber. I'm going to have a video for that. 
And then in this chamber, we're just gonna have the heater. So that's really all the steps needed. What I'm gonna do now is put the sand, put the rock work, and then the very last thing we're gonna have to do is add the water and uh, pretty much put the, uh, the light on it and we're gonna be uh, pretty much done. So let me get the sand, um, let me get the whole thing set up right before we add water. And then she, uh, so I can show you guys really how easy it is to get this thing together. All right, so here we have the sand bed. You can see, I'd say it's about quarter to like half an inch, a little bit under half an inch. Um, I try to get it as well packed as I could get it spread out. I know this sand, right? I've had this sand honestly since I started my first tank and there was, there's always been a little bit of water in there. Um, so it kind of like browned it a little bit. Um, but I've set up a few other tanks with the same sand and once the, the, the sand cycles, um, for you guys that don't know what cycling is, it's when the bacteria establishes on it. So once the sand cycles actually turns white. Um, so yeah, that's just stuff that's, that's uh, built up from storing it in the bag. Um, but yeah, it's actually gonna look uh, white once it cycles. So once you have your sand down, once you have it hard packed, uh, all nicely what you can do, you can see I have my whole rock work here on the bottom. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is set it um, all in there. And then when you do set it in, you wanna make sure you kind of wiggle it into place so it, so it sets all the way down. It's not just sitting on the surface of the sand. Uh, that just guarantees that over time it won't topple over. So once that's complete, what we are gonna do, we're gonna set up the whole return system with the return pump, get the heater in place, get everything in place on the rear of the tank uh, to pretty much get it ready for water. Um, now for water, you have a few options. You can either go to your local uh, local fish shop and buy pre-mixed water, or you can mix it on your own, which I'll, I also have a video of that here on my uh, YouTube channel. So, um, or, you know, maybe if you have a neighbor or a friend that's a reefer, I'm sure they'll help you out. But yeah, the easiest thing, especially if you're starting out, is just going to a local fish store and buying pre-mixed salt. Um, that should get you going without any issues whatsoever. All right, so we got the rock in place. I made I wiggled it in so it settled um, down on the sand, you can see there. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set up the return, um, the return pump, which is here. You're gonna find that in, in the boxes that came, um, in the boxes that came in the box, I guess. Um, and you're also gonna see when you open the return pump box, you're gonna get the manual. It's very straightforward. Um, it will tell you maintenance and how to take this front plate off and clean the foam uh, down the road. You wanna do that probably once every three to four months. And you're also gonna see it comes with this uh, smaller insert. You don't need this, obviously. Um, this one is made for this guy here. I would say this is probably, I don't know, maybe like a quarter inch. I'm not sure, but you don't wanna, just make sure it's threaded on, because um, you can see you can unthread it. So make sure it's finger tight all the way down. And then you're, you wanna install this uh, silicone piece on your return and then get that fitted um, in the back. Now you're gonna have to unscrew this part here and it's gonna get sandwiched when you put it in through here. So what I'm gonna do right now is get the return in, get everything else installed and then show you guys how that looks complete. So we got it here sandwiched. The only thing that took a little bit of time is to make sure, remember the silicone piece, it's kind of hard to see, um, but just make sure that was the right height um, uh, pushed in all the way to this guy. What I did is I first pushed it into the pump and then I, I kind of eyeballed it and got the right length so it's not kinked, so it's pretty much uh, straight up and down. It's actually pretty hard to see, but you can see it right there. Um, and then I just threaded this to that piece there and then you, you can see here, uh, the return nozzle is already hooked up. So route this all the way back to um, obviously a power source. You can power it. Make sure you don't power it until it has water. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do right now is get the heater set up. The heater's gonna be right here in this section, and we should be pretty much ready to fill this bad boy up. So to fill it up, it's very straightforward. You can use a return pump that came uh, with the tank. You can see I have a bucket here with salt water, and I'm using that to pump it in, or you can just go the standard way and just pour it into the tank. When you are pouring it, try to not put it on the sand and on the rock so you don't stir up uh, too much of the, of the sand and get kind of a sandstorm in the tank. So here you can see this is actually, I love watching this in playback because it happens so fast. In real time, this took quite a bit. Um, but here you can see the tank filling. When it is filling, be sure to check uh, to see if, if you see any leaks. As soon as you see any leaks, uh, you want to stop it. Also, it's very important that you do count how many gallons you put in the tank because this is what you're going to need later down the road when you do start dosing. So here I do have the heater. This is the uh, 50 watt Eheim Jaeger heater. You can go ahead and do the fluval. 
Um, just I've had better luck with, with Eheims, and they're a very well-respected brand. Um, I really love um, the heaters they have, and I love how you can actually uh, calibrate them. Um, but this, you can uh, put it in any chamber you have space. In my case, I'm going to put it in the return chamber, um, but pretty much anywhere you, you see there's space for it, you want to set it in and make sure it is submerged to, every heater has its own minimum water level. So you wanna make sure you, you put it to whatever level that is. Here's a shot kind of with the whole uh, return chambers in the back. You see the heater on the right. Um, and it's pretty straightforward as far as how I did it. Uh, so now you can pretty much sit back, again, checking for any leaks. You are gonna see the tank is quite cloudy. It's gonna take anywhere from 10 uh, to 24 hours, depending on what uh, sand and what rock you use to clear up. But this is perfectly normal. Uh, just let mother nature do her thing and it should uh, clear up in no time so just sit back and enjoy the view so one of the final steps we are going to be doing here you do want to locate the top lid um, you see it has a very nice finish um, got to give fluvo a big thumbs up and it also helps on your water evaporation uh, so when you do have the top off the tank um, you know it really helps out that's one thing you guys want to keep in mind as water evaporates salt doesn't so if you let this happen um, over time, or you, let's say once the water evaporates, if you add more salt water, all you're going to be doing is increasing the salinity. So over time, you can potentially kill everything in your tank. You want to make sure you, you add water that's evaporated with fresh water, not salt water, because again, the salt stays behind and only the water evaporates. The nice thing about this hood is it does help for very, very little um, evaporation. So that's a good thing. It also makes the tank look really clean, as you can see here. So the next step is we do want to locate the LED itself. Um, you can see it's a standard white blue um, uh, LED light, uh, very low power consumption, very low heat. It does get warm, but again, that's perfectly normal. Um, when you are feeding in the cord, you're going to see on the lid, there's a little hole in the back. You kind of want to feed um, the power cord through here and just uh, once you got it in, set it in. Um, and this light is touchscreen, so you are going to notice the buttons are towards the front top of it. You can also find in the instruction manual, um, but is it, it is touchscreen. There's off, on, um, and in the two on modes, it's either white light or blue light, uh, which we call a tinic. Uh, so that's pretty straightforward. So that's going to cover everything, or not everything, but at least what you need to know to get started. There is a few more topics we are going to cover in more videos and go a little bit more into detail. Uh, but guys, please, 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 if you are brand new at this, uh, you must let your tank cycle. In other words, let it run, let it get bacteria. You shouldn't throw fish in it um, or corals for that matter because the tank is going to have um, ammonia specks and so on. I am going to have a video coming up covering this topic in specific to give you guys a better idea. Uh, but this should get you going here as far as getting the tank up and running, get it cycled, get the water in there, choose the right sand, uh, the right rock, and so on and so forth. So. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys aren't subscribed, please subscribe. If you guys uh, also want to check me out on Instagram, I'm very social on there. Uh, so that's going to be pretty much it. Stay tuned for the future follow-up videos. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Happy reefing.